All right. Good morning, everybody. My name is Zach Eichenberger, Director of Product and Services for Control Product Systems Group. Welcome to another educational opportunity brought to you by CPSGU and LiftMaster. We're shooting for 30 minutes today. Because of the size of the session, we have muted your mics. Feel free to utilize the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. I believe it's on the bottom of your screen with Zoom. I will monitor those questions and feed them to Aaron and team as appropriate. Of course, we'll follow up this session with a link to the recording, including notes and some additional and documentation, including CEU credits and whatnot. Today, we're going to walk through the features, benefits, and rationale for developing the industrial line of slide gate operators, including the INSL industrial slide and the IHSL heavy industrial slide. Aaron and team sought out a ton of feedback from installers like you that resulted in what I would say an extremely thoughtful uh, development of this product to include features you're asking for. I think you'll find these features will nail the reliability needs you demand as well as other features that make retrofitting with this product easy, resulting in a clean installation. Uh, so you can be proud of the work that you do. So we've only got 30 minutes. I'm going to get out of the way. Aaron, the mic is yours. Thanks so much uh, for the work that you and your team have put into this launch. Uh, and probably more importantly, just staying committed to refresher it, refreshing the gate operator lineup with the uh, latest technology. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, this is Aaron Holcomb. Um, so I'm a, a product manager at LiftMaster. Um, I handle the gate operator and barrier operator lines. Um, Today, I'll, as, as Zach uh, mentioned, and, and thank you to CPSG for inviting me to do this, we'll walk through the industrial line of gate operators from LiftMaster. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give the backstory of, of where we came from whenever we did this, uh, talk through some of the um, features and, and why we did it and the feedback that we got. Um, but one thing I want to start out with is this idea of an industrial line gate operator. And, and one of our marketing folks actually kind of coined this term. And, and as we talked through all the features and what's important, and at the end, he's, he kind of looked at us and said, well, it just works. And, and I think that's one thing that we as a team during the development really focused on. And I'll even give you another example of whenever we talked about continuous duty and how these operators are really expected to be able to run without interruption, no concern in terms of cycles per hour per day as we had historically with our industrial line. And so we started speaking to this term of continuous duty and what it meant and electric motors are, it's very well defined, but on gate operators, what, what is actually continuous duty? And, and one of the comments that we got during our sessions is, well, just, it needs to work if I want it to, you know, my customer wants it to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all day long at its rated capacity, it should do that. And that's again, where we just kind of fell into this idea just works and, and so forth. So it's that high cycle continuous duty capability and the ability and also the ability to take weather environment, uh, any type of uh, issue in terms of someone trying to get in the cabinet and that's where these the steel cabinet comes into play. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into this. Um, but it, as Zach was talking about, we really wanted to spend a lot of time listening, but in, and in this slide, you'll notice the background and, and it's an SL595. We didn't want to forget our legacy, our heritage of that product and what it meant. I mean, frankly, before LiftMaster was involved with the product and, and its history and, and how it was a very reliable unit. It was old AC style motor, old, older drive system. It did have some installation quirks that took some time. It did have some more maintenance that took some time, but there was a good understanding of it. So we didn't want to scrap it and start over. So you'll notice the cabinet is very similar. And, and we'll talk maybe if we get to it a little bit at the end about how this cabinet was it looks very similar. It's a little bit smaller, but it's not smaller between the the uh, the post mounts. And the reason why we did that was to make sure it was retrofitable. It was drop-in replacement, so it's shorter, um, certainly much lighter. 
But what we did is when we listened, we, we heard the great things about the cabinet. We heard about the, obviously, the reliability side. We heard about the negatives and we heard about those features that we just simply don't have. And that's where battery backup and some of these other issues started coming about. So we fed all that in together to really kind of boil it down into five specific items. And, and that's where kind of our cornerstone was to focus on this new operator and make sure that we were able to address it, um, address it with the new operator as being more of an evolution of the line, not a revolution of the product, of the industrial product, but kind of feed in all these new feature sets. So when we boil it down into these five issues or five items, we look at reliability being number one. Um, and reliability is not just that it constantly is able to work, but we also have to be cognizant of the fact of these units are not, um, are not going to be working in an ideal state uh, all the time. And, and just as a side note, I apologize for those pop-ups coming up. We're trying to I was trying to get those off and it seems like they're popping up, but, um, but we really wanted to focus on the ability of the operator to work over a long distance time. It's like a vehicle that when it's new is going to be completely different or completely uh, uh, nice and smooth as opposed to a vehicle that's got a hundred thousand miles on it. There's wear and tear. So when we look at reliability, we want to make sure that it can significantly move a lot of weight of the of the gate itself but if there's friction and things like that that come into play it's not going to have any issue with that we obviously bring in brushless dc technology and the reliability that we have with that technology in terms of low power consumption no maintenance on the motor itself very smooth delivery um, and then of, lastly of course is that maintenance and complexity that we have with the current operators next thing we move into security and I think with security, the biggest thing that we looked at is it's not necessarily someone trying to get into the cabinet, which is certainly um, something we had to look at, and that's where the steel cabinet comes into play. But security also has the aspect of someone inadvertently hitting it, piling snow against it, things like that that the environment may provide that's going to make it easily to be accessible as someone bangs into it and pops open, you know, breaks a plastic housing on it or does something like that. So we really kind of looked at security being important, and we'll talk about the cabinet a little bit later in terms of some of those details. Um, and then getting into connectivity. With our product line, what LiftMaster is, is looking to be more of along the lines of service, a services company offering hardware, but all of our software capability as well. We wanted to bring these units up to par with our other gate operators in terms of connectivity. And that's where we're looking as, as an opportunity with it uh, to, to get these operators capable. Um, now we get into a little bit more of an, an interesting thing that came across in terms of uptime. And one thing that I, I was looking at some other data and uptime was an interesting conversation because we started talking about battery backup. It may not be needed. What's the point of battery backup? And the one thing that we did see is that Battery backup came, came up higher as we started looking into it because there's a stat that came out from the Associated Press where there's been 78% more power failures in the past 10 years because of a variety of reasons. I think we all know about the power grid and so forth. A lot of facilities might have backup power, but we got to really focus on is does it make sense to add another circuit to go out to a gate operator? Why can't that gate operator live on its own? do its own thing whenever there's a power failure. And that's where battery backup really kind of cropped up as more of an important factor than what people had thought before after they start focusing that that gate operator at the end of the day, it just works. It doesn't matter what's going on. Um, and then lastly, duty, we talked about how continuous duty is so important. We have to make sure that it operates constantly without interruption, no issues with heat buildup, the drive system's not going to get too much basically wear and tear and the, and the control board's not going to get hot and create problems within the control board itself. The last thing that I want to touch on, and we'll go through in a little bit more detail, is this whole retrofit. There is a significant and, and most likely a majority of these industrial line operators that are going to be replacing existing products. 
And we wanted to make sure that these were as drop-in replaceable as we possibly can to our current product line. And we'll go through the riser, which is what we're calling the stand that allows that retrofit ability um, a little bit later in some more detail. But that was a significant goal of our program. Um, so we have the two products. We have the IHSL, um, which we have the list price there, up to 5,500 pounds of gate capacity, 90 foot length, and also a five-year warranty. Um, and then we have the INSL, which is going to essentially look exactly the same. It's the same cabinet. And we'll go through a little bit of the differences between the two units. And it's more looking at that lighter 2,200 pound capability. So your, your older type of gates, maybe aluminum shorter gates, uh, chain link, things like that. We certainly didn't want to, I wouldn't say forget, but we wanted to make sure we had an offering that covered not only the larger gates that we see a trend to, but certainly this, what we see is more of the legacy type of gates um, that are out there. Uh, so let's do a quick walk around of the cabinet itself. So I talked about how we've got the new, uh, this is a new brushless DC motor system. But one thing you'll notice on the cabinet itself as you look at it, very clean, up in that left-hand corner is where the motor control and the power board are actually one unit now, different than our HDSL, which is, if you're familiar with the HDSL 24UL product, the motor control board is separate. It's its own unit. Here, all designed in-house, manufactured in-house, our firmware um, has been developed on this particular operator. So it's purely controlled by us quality. And now we're able to put that into, instead of two separate boards, we got it into one board. Uh, the brushless motor is custom to us, specifically to our needs and our requirements. Same on both products. Not the motor itself, but saying that it was specific to us. Um, same with the gearbox. We really focused on the gearbox in terms of the gears and how they're machined and the friction on the surface of the gears themselves. Um, one thing that that allows us to do is making sure that the motor is efficient as possible, um, make sure we have no issue in terms of obstruction if there's an immediate stop and getting the gate operator to reverse without no binding. Um, and then, of course, lockable latches, very important in terms of this unit and uh, making sure that the ability of either putting a padlock or some other type of lock through the metal latches. Um, so there are two on this unit, um, and in that way, they can be completely locked without an issue. Uh, going up on the other side, you'll notice that the control board, if you look at it in this picture, if you're familiar with HDSL, again, consistency of the product. So we made this board essentially the same as the HDSL board, and it has that added variable speed. Um, similar type of terminal box, expansion boards, very familiar to other LiftMaster products, no difference. Familiarity was key with this product line, so we wanted to make sure we did that. We also have the ability of adding two relay boards on the IHSL. We are providing a standard with one board based upon the feedback that we got. Um, that it was needed on some higher end gate installations and some complicated uh, uh, installations that the IHSL would be under. Um, the manual release with latch, this is actually a really good setup in terms of it's all metal, in terms of the lever and everything is all, there's no cables in the system. It's a lever that's pulling out basically the pin in the gearbox directly to, to allow the manual release. And then there's a catch on it in terms of a spring-loaded catch that will actually hold that manual release in place. And then when you're done, you can simply just press it down and it'll automatically spring back into place. It's a really good type of setup that's not going to have any issues, again, with a cable running through some type of complicated system, uh, very easy to control. The last thing I wanna to touch on, and it's hard to see in the picture, obviously, because it's black, but we really tried to focus on the chassis rigidity. That is a quarter inch plate steel chassis that directly bolts all the drive system to it. And it bolts directly to where the post mounts are gonna be, or if it's a riser stand directly to those mounts. So it is a completely continuous rigid mount um, uh, uh, drivetrain, as opposed to relying on the cabinet itself to carry all that 
torque and all that capability. That's the inner chassis that's within the product. And then in terms of the one thing that we did hear a lot about the industrial operators is, okay, fine, it's a nice steel chassis, you know, that's great, steel cabinet. Um, what happens when I start putting in bigger batteries, you know, the three-phase kit? What happens when I start doing that and my go have room for everything? That was a major goal with this particular product is not only did we want to make sure that it was a steel cabinet that's going to be 14 gauge. And if you're familiar with toolboxes and things like that, especially recently with some of the other brands you might see in big box stores, those are like 20 gauge steel. They're somewhat flimsy. 14 gauge steel is going to have significant amount of rigidity to it. So we've got that in the cabinet, but now we wanted to make sure we had plenty of room to add all these accessories in it. So heaters, everything can be added in. There's room for everything. There's mount points, um, very easy to get to. And again, it can be put in a cabinet and locked. And then the last thing is, and we'll go through some of the weight discussions on the INSL, but this product is significantly lighter, almost half the weight of the SL595. So not only do we have the, the steel cabinet and everything in similar in that regard, but a significant weight reduction as well. Uh, the other thing is we just really wanted to listen and, you know, listen to you guys and, and find out what we needed to do and not just, you know, do what's best for us um, in terms of this product line. So we listen in terms of the wire harness, for example. Um, we could have just been very, I guess, haphazard in the way we laid out the wires, whatever is easier to manufacture. Um, and one thing that we did hear quite a bit and is just this burden's nest of wiring that's just all over the place. So we took some, I would say, some careful discussions within engineering and manufacturing, how we laid out the wire harness and how it made not only just a cleaner look, but just making sure someone didn't accidentally pull something they didn't mean to or couldn't fit something in the cabinet they intended to because a wire harness didn't have enough wire lead in it or something along those lines. The other thing that we you know heard quite a bit is drilling through the cabinet. Um, not a big deal. You know, people can do it. It's not a, not a problem. It does take time. But let's just go one step more. Let's just make it a little bit easier because we don't know where all the pipes are going to come in for electrical, you know, where people are going to run accessories into it. We're, we're not sure of that. But let's at least help. Let's do what we can from a development side. And that's where on this operator at the bottom, there's two plates that are screwed in place. They're still fully sealable. They won't create any, luckily they're on the bottom. So obviously there's not a significant amount of water pressure that's gonna come into them, but they are fully sealable. You can take out those plates, just leave them out if you want to and run all the air coming and outgoing wiring as needed, or you can drill through them and then put them back in place. There's a variety of ways, but it was just one of those things that we found that we could help out the installation without tearing something up without guesswork, more than anything else of what everyone is doing from an installation, and possibly it would be easier for, for install, which was obviously one of our goals. The other thing that we wanted to focus on in terms of the brushless DC technology. So we launched the HD operator um, a couple of years ago. Um, we know the benefits of brushless DC. And I think one of the benefits is going to be you know, certainly continuous duty, it creates less heat, it's more efficient on the system, there's no maintenance, but also that soft start and soft stop. I think one, one thing I always, I've said this before, and I'm, I'm hoping you guys have not heard this comment from me in terms of some uh, analogy I have, but, you know, I, where I grew up, there was a lot of uh, diesel trucks and so forth, and, and as someone used to always tell me, it's, you know, you got to, uh, consider that throttle like you're squeezing an egg because back in the day if you put you know hammer down the throttle you had a tendency to you know hurt rear ends and things like that transmissions and that's kind of what this soft start soft stop does instead of hammering the whole gate system at 100 percent torque right at startup to get it moving and you get that jerk and everything now it's a much easier and softer system so not only is it good for the operator but it's also good for the complete gate system because now you don't have to worry about things being out of alignment and getting worse because it's getting hammered by the operator when it's opening and closing. It's just gonna be a generally just a nicer system 
in, in, in overall, and you're not going to have to worry about things being breaking and having issues. The other thing about brushless DC is it certainly allows us to add battery backup. I've talked about that and the importance behind it. Um, variable speed, which is a nice, uh, um, nice parameter to have in terms of if you're in a certain situation, you don't want the gate to move one foot per second, you can certainly slow it down. Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on is I've talked about the efficiency level, but there is a significant improvement with this system in terms of three times the less power usage than what we saw at almost twice the amount of gate weight. And as we start talking about facilities and the pressure on the grid and money and cost savings, it certainly is not much. It's, it's, it's pennies, but every penny counts, every nickel counts. And just getting an operator out there, it's going to be slightly more efficient. Well, actually significantly more efficient, but possibly just a small blip on the overall radar of a facility that's still going to add up. And that's still going to be a meaningful improvement to what they're seeing with the existing product line. Um, the next slide I want to go through is I actually want to talk through for a few minutes why we did this. Um, and we talked about why we wanted to update the product in the industrial lineup and actually have a legitimate player. Um, but one thing that we noticed uh, through our research is how much gates are getting a little bit heavier, a little bit longer, a little bit more stout. And our current offering, you know, was generally under 2,500 pounds. And we felt like we were missing out. And also we wanted to frankly go after as an alternative to some of the much higher price units that are using different ways of, of drive systems. And that's why we started looking at 5,500 pounds as kind of that upward limit that we wanted to get into and be competitive. But then we initially, frankly, were looking at just one version of this operator. And as we started getting into a little bit more and understanding, talking to dealers specifically and, and really understanding what's important to them and where a lot of their volume is in terms of retrofits, we had to make sure that we had a unit that's going to be have all those same features I talked about, but it doesn't need to be capable of 5,500 units. So there's not a si huge difference in cost because of all the features, but there's a little bit more of a of a difference in efficiency and pricing at that lower amount for the INSL. And the big difference is it's going to have a gearbox that's more in line to that product. If, and as a result, it's going to be lighter again. It's going to only be 129 pounds because it's a little bit smaller gearbox, a little bit smaller motor size as well, because frankly, it just doesn't need it. Um, but also the chain. We went to a smaller chain because soft start, soft spot, stop again. You're not yanking that chain. You're not lengthening it. We don't need to do that. So that's where we went with a slightly smaller chain, which also helps because it just generally doesn't have all that weight to it. It's going to help with slack in the chain um, as well. And then in terms of retrofit, I'll touch on this. I, I want to leave just a couple of sec, uh, minutes at the end just in case. But one thing that we did look at is obviously post replacement is very easy for this product. But in terms of SL585 with pad replacement, we needed to make sure that we had a solution for that. And that's what the MRIN is. And you can see the two ears on the side. One is actually a continuous piece of steel on the right side. The left one is bolted on in place. It bolts directly to the side where the post would, would actually bolt to, which bolts directly to that chassis member. So it's all one continuous piece. And it has, it's, it's very thick plate steel very little movement whatsoever. I mean, no movement, um, especially as you get up to 5,500 pounds. And it's got closeouts front and rear that's going to allow you to close out and have a very cl nice, clean look. And what this riser allows us to do is offer a fully retrofitable unit. So if you're pulling out an SL585 that's on a pad, you can just take this one with the riser and drop it in place. Now, over the years, there's been some differences in where those anchor bolts are. So we always say just double check that before, you know, measure where they're at, make sure you know it before you uh, just assume it can be drop in. But the intention was to be fully drop in replacement. So that's where I wanted to just kind of touch on the end here. You know, we're offering this as an industrial solution. We're leveraging that BLD technology. 
We've got an extremely robust steel cabinet. And as a result, we've increased our warranty on this product to five years as opposed to two years on the current product. And also what we're doing is we have multiple videos out there. We have a walk around video. We have a features and benefit video. Um, there's some additional training videos. So we have significant amount of videos available for people to see. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I think I left five minutes here. I talked pretty quickly. Um, so I just, uh, just want to thank everyone for uh, giving me the opportunity and maybe Zach, if we want to go through any questions, uh, real quick. Yeah, we can do them live. I kind of started answering some on the chat. Um, but there was a question around the removable plates. You know, if you remove one of those plates that can open you up to, you know, rodents and debris. So just wanted to clarify. The idea is to remove those plates, drill them out, bring your conduits in, or drill them out on the truck or in a vise where it's easier to drill those holes, yep. and then reinstall them and bring your conduits in uh, through the bottom. Uh, there's a question yeah, around. Yeah, we. Go ahead. Oh no, we we were even talking about if someone's using half inch conduit or rigid versus EMT or plastic. We we just there's so many options out there. It just made more sense to allow the installer to drill through them so they can get that good seal. Yeah, yeah, well done there. Uh, this question around maximum speed, minimum speed. Uh, I believe both models, correct, Aaron, is uh, you can dial them down to a half uh, foot per second and dial them up to one foot per second. Is that correct? Correct, yep, correct. Um, and the chain, I kind of uh, gratuitously threw out there, hey, the IHSL comes with number 50 in the uh, INSL comes with 40. Is that nickel or black chain? Let me take a look. You might yeah, know. so number 40, I, I will say this, number 40 right now, we have a black chain, black oxide. Uh, I will say this live uh, here. We are um, evaluating that option. Um, the number 50 is nickel plated. Uh, we are evaluating you know, commodity prices are changing and, and a lot of feedback we've gotten. We need to relook at that number 40 chain, but right now it's black oxide. If we do change it, we'll certainly release a product bulletin uh, explaining that to everyone. 10-4. Are, are there currently any plans for a similar solution for industrial swing gate operators? Uh, it, it's hard for me to say uh, right now. I will say in the short term, you're, you're not going to see anything from LiftMaster in terms of swing uh, with this type of solution, but we are certainly evaluating uh, expanding this line. Excellent. And the HDSW is got some pretty high ratings on it, if I recall. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's, um, that is a very similar drive system to the industrial line operators as well. So yeah, the HDSL especially or HDSW, especially with that long arm option, is is really stout. So Aaron, for those on the call that you know have made the 585 and the 595 like a standard part of their offering. Um, the idea would be to transition to the industrial line. Should how quickly should they be thinking about doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm, I we are in the final stages of of releasing what very few SL five eighty five and five ninety fives we have on hand. We have very very limited quantity available. Um, we are. Uh, um, that transition for us has been completed uh, in terms of moving to the new industrial line. But I think for for the dealers and installers on on the line, um, yeah, that that transition uh, certainly before the end of the year. Um, but our stock levels are almost completely di uh, diminished on the on the SL five eighty five and five ninety fives right now. Yeah, I believe we still have some in stock. Uh, Aaron showed some list pricing uh, earlier. Don't let that scare you. Reach out to your local CPSG branch. <laughs> quote, you will be pleasantly surprised at the price difference between a 585, 595. You get all of these features and benefits that Aaron discussed today um, for a very, uh, you know, very small difference in price. Uh, Barry asked yeah, a good I question here. Sorry, go ahead. 
Oh. No, I, I was just going to say, I mean, we at LiftMaster, we are very cognizant of the fact that we've had a lot of commodity challenges and we've, we've kind of, you know, released those as product or as pricing changes during the past uh, year or so. Um, we want to come out with this product aggressively. We feel it is, it is a, um, it's a really good product, obviously, but we didn't want to, <laughs> We didn't want to nickel and dime people on pricing too. So I think to Zach's point, I think I'm hoping you'll be pleasantly surprised um, at the pricing on it. Agreed. Uh, two more questions and then we got to wrap up. Barry asked, are there any safety devices included? And uh, Patty asked about uh, parts for the 585, 595. Will they, those be available uh, in the near future or how long will they be? Yeah. Uh, good question. So first one, yes, standard with all of our slide gate operators, there will be the edge and the, the photo eyes um, with every operator. Uh, no difference there um, to our other slide operator offerings. Uh, in terms of parts, uh, we do plan on supporting parts for that product um, for quite a while. Our goal is to look at somewhere in the range of eight to 10 years to support parts, we, I mean, we have been hit with some issues of, of parts not being available because of raw materials going away or, or specific, even uh, specific components just simply not being manufactured anymore. But our goal is from a parts perspective, yes, we will support this for quite a number of years. Excellent. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for running us through the product line. For all of you out there, again, reach out to CPSG, get that quote. I will send out a follow-up email with a recording of this session and uh, some sell sheets and additional information. I'll include those videos, Aaron, of the walkthrough and the features and benefits videos. You did a really nice job on that. So thank you everybody for attending and um, have a great rest of your week.